In this video, we will learn how to create virtual domains or VDOMs on FortiGate Firewall. Virtual domains allow you to split your FortiGate into multiple isolated firewalls. Think of virtual domains like a VRF in a router, which splits your router into multiple virtual routers, and each virtual router or VRF have a totally different route table and access list. In the same fashion, VDOMs will allow you to assign different interfaces in your firewall to different domains and create different route tables and firewall policies to use on each domain as if you bought multiple physical devices. Virtual domains will help us maximize and utilize our firewall resources to serve multiple needs on the same physical or virtual device. Most physical firewall models allow you to split the firewall up to 10 different instances with no additional charge. Although this feature has been absent from cloud firewalls for a long while, they are now supported only for bring your own license models. So we will not be able to use this feature on in-demand instance on AWS. Let's switch the view to our on-premises firewall. And first we need to enable the virtual domain feature. This can be done using the CLI and we need to enter the command config system global to edit this global device setting. And we enter the command set VDOM mode and we switch our options to multi VDOM. And then we hit enter to end and save our config. This will kick us out of our management session as it will update the GUI and the CLI of the device. And once we log in again to the firewall, we will get a new drop down menu on the left sidebar. We have a choice between global and root. Let's start with global. Global refers to the global settings that are not VDOM specific. So we will lose most of our options in the global view like firewall policies, address object, VPNs, or route table, as all these are VDOM specific. Under interfaces, we will see a VDOM association with every interface in our list. Currently, all boards are associated with our first root domain, which is our default VDOM or the device as a whole before we slice it. And inside our root domain, we will get another interfaces page that shows only the interfaces associated with that particular domain. We will also see our old firewall policy that used to be located in the main screen, now has been moved under root ADOM. Same applies to our VBN, it moved in here as well. Now in order for us to create additional VDOMs besides root, we will need to switch to the global view and go under system VDOM. We will see our current VDOMs and stats for CPU usage and RAM usage for every instance. We are still limited by the total resources of the firewall and how much traffic bandwidth it can handle. So we can go ahead and create our new VDOM. We can call our new VDOM internet to purpose it as an internet edge. And now we see our second VDOM in the list and it has completely isolated CPU and RAM usage. Session table is empty. No interfaces are assigned to it initially and no policies are exist. So we are working on a completely isolated empty device as of this moment. On the routing monitor, we no longer have our VBN route as before because we are dealing with another route table. Now to be able to use this VDOM, we need to dedicate some of our firewall interfaces to serve that domain only. As all our interfaces right now are assigned to the root VDOM, we can choose the DMZ board for example, and all we need is to edit the interface configuration. From the new VDOM assignment menu, we will change it from root to our new VDOM internet. 
this setup will not work if we have any dependencies for that particular interface in this root VDOM. For example, if you have a firewall policy in the root VDOM that has port DMZ mentioned, you will not be able to change your VDOM. You need to delete the policy first or the route or whatever dependency it has to be able to proceed. We can also give the interface a new IP address 172.16.0.1/22 We may also give this interface https access permission then we can save our config now our global interface page showing us the various interface association for the root and internet vdoms but under the internet vdom inside our interfaces page we only get to see the dmz board as this is the only interface associated with the internet vdom we can also create our first firewall policy we only see dmz in the interfaces list for the internet vdom firewall policy now let's also try to add a static route we will see the limitation in the device menu as we only see DMZ and black hole. So we can create any routes we need for this VDOM only. And if we switch back to our root VDOM, we now have our original route table with the VPN route. If you are done using a specific domain and want to completely remove it, you also have to clear any dependencies first before you will be able to delete it. As of now, we see the delete button is not activated, so we know that we have dependencies that we need to remove. So let's open the reference list to verify what is associated with this VDOM that need to be removed, and we see references to our DMZ interface and another interface named SSL, which is a system interface and it will be deleted automatically so we don't have to worry about the SSL interface. What we need to do first is to delete the firewall policy to clear off the dependency on the DMZ board and then we will be able to change the DMZ interface VDOM from internet to root And now we will be able to delete our VDOM as it has no dependencies. Now let's check the impact on the CLI commands after we enable the virtual domains feature. If we try the command config system global that we use to enable the virtual domains feature, it no longer works. Same for config system interface where we can modify our interfaces. And the reason is all these commands have been moved to our global view, similar to the GUI. So when VDOM feature is enabled, you always have to remember to enter the command config global first, then enter any global setting that you need to modify. Similarly, if we want to make firewall policy changes or routing changes, you have to enter the VDOM configuration first, specify which instance or which VDOM you want to edit, and then under that specific VDOM you choose, you can edit the routes, policy, VBN, or anything else that is VDOM specific. Now to switch between VDOMs via CLI, we can just use the command end or next to go one level up, and then when it says VDOM between brackets, that means we are able to edit, create, or delete a VDOM. To create a new VDOM, all we need to do is edit and write the new VDOM name. And this will create it if it doesn't exist. From inside the VDOM, we can change system interfaces, assign DMZ board, for example, to our new VDOM, And if we refresh our GUI, we will see our new VDOM and DMZ board association. To revert this process, we edit our DMZ board again 
reassign it to the root VDOM given that it has no dependency on the new VDOM now. And then to delete the VDOM from the CLI, we can write next, go back to our VDOM and simply write the command delete and then the VDOM name. You have to be double extra careful with this step as if you specify the wrong VDOM name and delete it, you cannot undo this deletion. Finally, if you no longer need to virtualize your device and would like to turn off the VDOM feature, which is a global setting, we need to go first into global view using the command config global. And then under config system global, we can enter the command set VDOM mode, no VDOM. This will kick us out of our management session again. And if we relog in, we will get the consolidated view bane with policies, routes, VBNs, all in one page and one instance. And that's how you configure virtual domains or VDOMs on 48 firewall. Thank you for watching.